Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Goetia. Now, feeling a little bit grumpy, and not just because my internet is all messed up this week. No, let me just press escape a second, and you can see here up in the right hand corner there's this number here, 6%. Now yesterday, I recorded a load of episodes from this, and I got a long way into the game. In fact, I got that number all the way up to 20% before I realized that the sound was completely messed up. So, we're going to do it all, possibly over the next couple of episodes, catch up where we were before we start uh, exploring into the unknown. So, there's going to be slightly less more of my bumbling around than usual, and more actually getting the job done. So some people might actually like this. But before we go on, let's just uh, do two things. Now, there was two wonderful comments in the last episode. One from Melody Flower, who suggested that the feather might be useful to get through these uh, runes. Now, I'm not entirely certain that's going to be the case, but we can always test it. And unfortunately... As you can see, this is not going to do anything. Well, the, the reason for this is that... Uh, while I can understand your logic there, Melody, the rules of the game do state that physical objects can't pass through physical barriers. So unfortunately, that's not going to be the solution to our problem. Uh, the other suggestion made was that... Um, right at the start, we found a note that was said that there was this powder that would reveal hidden messages. And Haley Round was wondering if this powder in this box was the thing that would do it. So, let's take it down to the kitchen, shall we? So, drop it off there. Pump, quite literally drop it off. Send it down. And then let's head down ourselves. So here we are in the kitchen, and if we possess this, take it over here. It's not the red powder. Maybe I'll at least be able to make some nice fireworks. Which is a really weird message, because if you look, it's revealed a message. It's a really weird, it's really weird, no, it makes sense. Let's go have a look at this. It reads, the eldest birth. Okay, so I think we can work that one out quite easily, because here we have Annie and her four children. I'd say the eldest is one of these two, so let's look at this one. Uh, this was uh, in 1939 when Alexander Hodgkin was 28 years old. And this one is Gabriel Hodgin, who and he was 31 years old in 1939, so he's probably the eldest. Let's have a quick look at the rest. Yeah, so 14 years old and 10 years old. Okay, so what we have here is if he was 31 years old in 1939, he was born in 1908. We need to bet that if we come over here, one, nine, ow, oh, nineteen oh eight, <laughs> okay. I can't say I'm disappointed, but this is not what I expected. Where do these lights come from? Okay, so... Okay... A-G-E-R. Those are probably the kids, aren't they? My dear Alexander, 
I know you disapprove of all this. You have made that perfectly clear these past few days. Forgive me, my dear child, but I must see this through to the end. Our family has suffered too much. I hope you'll find it in you to forgive me for what I did, wherever you are now. I'm sure you are happy where you are now. Your loving mother, Annie. Okay. Oh. Annie, my God, what happened to you? What have you done? I don't understand all these sigils, these messages, these experiences, and this silence. I can't stand to be alone here. What happened to the Blackwoods? And why did I wake up? Where is Annie? This is a nightmare. Oh, poor girl. Mother, father, mother, please, I'm begging you, come back, help me. A noise, is someone there? I think it came from the hall. I think we should go and have a look at the hall. We can't get up through there. And we can't get out through there, so let's head back into the kitchen here. And we'll pop up here. And the hall is over this way. Okay. Let's see what is different. No, not that. Is there more hall this way? I think there is, isn't there? Why did I need to open the door to go through? That makes no sense at all. Ah, that's new. What's this on the floor first? The crockery's broken, and it didn't fall by itself. Oh, there's something on the shelf. Damaged table the manor seems abandoned. I don't understand. That's a wrong message. Something hexagonal, just like on the pedestal outside the manor. I should try taking it there. Okay, let's possess the hexagon. The door's locked. We're not getting out that way then. Remember, the law says we can't put physical objects through physical objects. But, I wonder if we can go through this hole. This hole must lead somewhere. Ah, you see, it's changed to a crosshairs now. There we go. Alright, so out through the tunnel. Here we go. The opening closed behind me. The manor seems a little bit more alive than I'd like. If I remember right. There we go. That's the pedestal we're talking about. It fits perfectly. And a secret door opens. What's that say? A mechanical opening to a crypt? This is absurd. What would someone be hiding among the coffins? I'd like to leave this place as soon as I can. How about this one? A key, of course. Now let's find the locket opens, if it belongs to Mrs. Ward, as I suspect. Okay, so let's possess the key. This is one way of taking possession, isn't it? And back up through the old. And off we go back to the manor house. And we can't get in through the door because it's locked, but if we go up here, there's a window we can come in through. And we can't go that way. 
and we can't go that way but if you look down here it's going to take me a little while to notice first time around there's a crack in the floor and we can get the key through that so there we go and we go back through I think it's through here there is a locked cupboard oh yeah Open the door. There we go. And that gives us this. And there's the opposite sigil for Malthus. And with that, we should be able to banish him just as soon as we find the guy. Well, well, that's quite a discovery, young lady. Do remember this sigil. Try to memorize every relief. This will be crucial when you try to oh, chase me out of these walls. And because of that, we've lost a lot of the blockages we had. So let's have a look at the map again. Um... Looks like there should be something getting us off to the left there. And we looks like we're going to be able to get into a lot more of this manor. Now, I'm going to, what I want to do first is we've got two more items left and I'd like to find the um I'd like to find the stories behind those before we go off and so what we'll do is we'll do the the uh, the notebook and the feather. And then after that we'll go and explore and we'll probably explore next episode. Uh, did we have a quick look at our journal? So we've done the awakening, and this time we've done the banishing of Malfas. A noise from the ground floor. Is it a friendly presence or something more sinister? I have to go to the hall. Nothing, and no one. Maybe it was a rat. This place is quite decrepit after all. Yet another disappointment. I managed to find a curious object in the hall, at least. A wooden hexagon bearing the blackwood arms. I think I know where to put it. The serpent's tomb. I didn't know we had one. I would love to say hello to Mrs. Ward. So here are the five demons that live in Blackwood now. Boon, Foras, Neberus, Paimon, and Malphus, of course. Annie, why are you doing this? I feel so lost and powerless. I should now be able to banish Malphus from this place. Then I'll take care of the others. And for that, I'll need to meet them first. I'm scared, but it seems that I have little choice in the matter. Am I supposed to cleanse Blackwood? Is that why I'm here? This is madness. Right, and we have the feather and the torn notebook. So let's see if we can take care of those. All right. Just check here, just to make sure there is nothing extra new. Okay, we've already read that book. Right. So let's go and all the way back to where we put the objects. Here we are. So let's have a quick look at these again. It's a little notebook, short turn start. And some of the pages have been torn away. Perhaps they're still around here somewhere. And now, if we possess this, we should be able to take this into this room here and see something extra. But as you can see, we don't see the something extra. And the reason for that is there's one puzzle we haven't really bothered looking at up to this point. So we'll just leave the notebook there and we're going to head back to the kitchen. Uh, because if you remember the last time we found a torn up message in the fireplace. Now we've got to get this exactly right repairing this okay and this can be really frustrating to do because it's got to be pixel perfect. I think, to be totally honest with you, 
the developers could have been a little bit more lenient with this so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to ah, there we go that one's now joined and it won't pull away I'm probably going to cut this bit out or put some montage music in probably it's going to depend on how long it is but I'll see you guys on the other side Well, that took far too long. If anybody from the development team is watching, and I doubt they are, but still, this was frustrating to do. You've got to get the pieces of paper just the right distance away from the other piece of the paper for them to join up. And what's annoying is if they're too close, it won't work. But still, we've done it. My young brother, it's been a while since I haven't put you to your put your keen mind to the test. How... that sentence just doesn't make sense. How would you feel about a paper chase? First clue, chariot. Happy hunting. Okay. Now. We have found... In a previous pass through... This game. Um, a previous episode, I should say. Uh, a copy of Ben-Hur, but we couldn't read it at the time, so I'm wondering if now we can read it. Can you sit up here? Not quite. No, it's a bit more over. Through here, I think. No. There it is. I will let the chariot alone today. In its place, let them bring me a fifth horse, if thou hast it. He should be barebacked and fleet as the others. Ilderim's wonder was aroused, and he summoned a servant immediately. Bid them bring the harness for four, he said, and harness for the four. Bid them bring the harness for the four, he said, the harness for the four and bridle for Sirius. Ilderim then arose. Sirius is my love, and I his, O son of Arius. We have been comrades for twenty years, in tent, in battle, in all stages of the desert. We have been comrades. I will show him to you. Going to the division curtain, he held it while Ben-Hur passed under. The horses came to him in a body, one with a small head, luminous eyes, neck like a segment of bended bow, and mighty chest, curtained thickly by profusion of mane, soft and wavy as a damsel's locks, nickered low, and gladly at sight of him. Good horse, said the sheikh, petting the dark brown cheek. Good horse, good morning. Turning then to Ben-Hur, he added, This is Sirius, father of the four here. Mira, the mother, awaits our return, being too precious to be hazarded in a region where there is a stronger hand than mine. And much, I doubt, he laughed. Much, I doubt, O son of Arius, if the tribe could endure her absence. She is their glory. They worship her. Did she gallop over them, they would laugh. Ten thousand horsemen, sons of the desert, would ask today, Have you heard of Mira? And the answer, She is well, they will say. God is good. Blessed be God. Mira, Sirius. Names of stars, are they not, O Sheikh? asked Ben-Hur, going to each of the four and the sire, offering his hand. And why not? replied Ild 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 Ildrim. Wert thou ever abroad in the desert at night? No. Then thou canst know how we Arabs depend upon the stars. We borrow their names in gratitude and give them in love. My fathers all had their mirrors, and I have mine, and these children are stars, no less. There, see thou, is Rigel, and, the, and there Antares, and this one is Altair, and he whom thou goest now is Eldebaran, the youngest of the brood, but none the worse for that. No, not he. Against the wind he will carry thee till the roar in thy ears is like Akaba, and he will go where thou sayest, son of Aris. Aye, by the glory of Solomon, he will take thee to the lion's jaws if thou darest so much. The harness was brought. With his own hands, Ben-Hur equipped the horse. With his own hands, he led them out of the tent and there attached the reins. Bring me Sirius, he said. An Arab could not have better sprung to seat of a courser's back. 
and now the reins. They were given to him and carefully separated. Okay, right, the word horse is highlighted there. And I'm willing to bet, let's have a quick look at the journal. Uh, the novel pointed out by the previous clue is annotated. The word horse is circled. But finding a horse in the manor will not be easy. Ah, but we saw one recently, didn't we? So, let's go... And uh, it's down here. Over here. Here is a horse. One we can now possess. Okay. Santa! A drawing of what seems to be an old man wearing a hat was hidden under the bronze statue. A familiar silhouette. Indeed it is. Because we keep on passing it. John Falco. The old man's portrait is signed to John Falco. What shall I conclude? Something about his name? His first name? His identity? Now, we are after a four-letter word, and not in the usual way, because, if you guys remember, there is over here a box with a four-letter combination. And I'm willing to bet that we can spell John. Let's find out. J O H N. Ah, that's interesting. A sealed room next to the kitchen? I was unaware of it. I'd like to take a look. I think we both would. So come along, Abigail. Let's go and take a look. Ooh. It's impossible to guess what it is. Looks like a make piece of makeshift furniture made out of wine crates. Yes, I'm going to ignore the obvious one. The old front door. I wonder where the other panel is. A gigantic raven. Demonic sigils and now a bright orb that can levitate. Whatever will they think of next? I feel strangely drawn to the shape. Maybe I can learn something from it. Abigail is now able to see traces or details about the history of the most recent owner of the item. Possess an item and explore with it for the moment to see if something else is highlighted. The last actions of the living might help you in your quest. And that, if you think about it, it's probably going to help us an awful lot with these two items. So if we go here... And pick up the notebook again. Look at this. I caught her going through your room. I told you what she wanted to do and why you must not follow her under any condition. Please trust me. As soon as you find this note, hide it as best you can, or even better, destroy it, and come to me at the wood's edge. I'll be waiting for you there with Sally and Robert. Everything will be all right. You have my word. Alexander. So. It seems Alexander, one of Annie's sons, wanted to protect someone, or several people. His brothers? 
What were they threatened by? We shall have to investigate that one, but for now... Let's do the same thing with the feather, so we'll possess it. Like that, and let's just take a wander through the house and see if we can find anything new appears because we are possessing the feather. Nothing here. Nothing new here. Not seeing anything here. And west of there goes outside, so let's head upwards. Nothing new here by the looks of it. I'm assuming it's going to be shiny like the last time. Oh! Okay, this is a new area. We don't want to go into the new area. And we can't go down because it's a physical object. Well, we know we're here. I think we missed some stuff over here, didn't we? Right, well, we might as well just go back this way. Let's see if we can get through this way. We can! Shlup. Oh, and look at this. How oh, come I didn't see these scratches? I recognize this. My treasure box. A ball of string I used in my many adventures. Some dice that I could use to play with anywhere. And something to write with even in the darkest of night. Yes, and... This isn't mine. I'm sure I didn't draw this. Is it a sigil? It looks like those that father studied, but none of them was called Abigail. Now I, I wonder. I wonder if this was used to summon Abigail, if this is the reason why, as a ghost, she's floating around the place. So is there going to be a reverse sigil to banish Abigail, and is that going to be the end of the game? If this is a joke, it's not a very funny one, and I'm starting to get scared. There's no one here. Everything seems to be frozen in time, and the banner is covered in esoteric symbols. I must find answers. You must, you're right. Uh, let's have a quick look at the journal again. So, it looks like we've all we caught up on all the mysteries we know, so I think next episode, what we'll do is... We'll start exploring the places that we haven't been to yet. The places that have opened up because the barriers have dropped. And we'll see where they take us. But until then, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been a flying possessed feather. Thank you. And good night.